Welcome to the U.S. Open 10 Ball Championship, proudly presented by Q Sports International and hosted here in Las Vegas at Griff's Billiards. It's a first round matchup, race to nine, alternate break, and let's meet our two opponents. First up, hailing from Russia, Ruslan Chinahov. And his opponent, hailing from the United States of America, Kurt Kobayashi. Gentlemen, have a great match and you may lag for break. Welcome everyone to day one of the 2019 US Open 10 ball. We have a match here between Kurt Kobayashi and Ruslan Chinahov. This is George Teachev <laughs> with Jeremy Jones in the booth, uh, bringing you the live action from Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jeremy, how are we? We're good. Uh, another, another great match here on the winner's side. Chinahoff and Kobayashi, which is uh, both of them, uh, competed just a few weeks ago here in Las Vegas. Um, Chenehoff probably a little bit more established player as far as recognized for some big wins and mm. uh, comes from Moscow and Kurt from Hawaii. Uh, pretty fine player though. Well, he's a two-time nine ball and eight ball uh, state champion. Uh, he has Kobayashi Billiards and a pro shop there. He also operates a BCA uh, BCA league in Hawaii. 39 year old with a 667 Fargo. His opponent is Rus Ruslan Chinahov, 789 Fargo. Right. Uh, he was one of the ranked players. I believe he was number 10 seated player out of the 16 that they were seated. Texas, well, you should know this. He's a Texas 10 ball champion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was there when he won it. Yeah. DCC 2018 14 1. A Virginia 10 ball champion in 2018, a 2017 Molinari players champion. I believe he was a not sure, maybe a world junior champion as well. Uh, the one at Pyramid, mm -hmm. I'm playing Pyramid Russian, Russian billiards. A lot of people don't realize that a man that seems like he's been around for a while, but still only 27 years old. Okay, I was going to say 26, but I always give him the benefit of the doubt when it comes to that. Um, still has a lot to do in this sport, but has a lot of time still left to do it. Not an easy safety here, and I'm not so sure with only having the gap to go between the 510. I don't think he's going to go be behind the 10. He's going between the 510. I might have passed that one just because there wasn't much room uh, to get between there. Mm -hmm. And there was openings to, to it could leak out, go right through there. Yeah, and it still one you kind of feel like you're going to execute. Would this be a, a bank shot, especially with the new cloth that you consider taking? Well, I think he's calling it mainly because he's drifting the two past them balls and yeah, bringing the cue safe. ball by it. If he makes it, the problem is what's he going to have on the three? And looky there, just right in the window. See, I was I, I, I looked at that, and I thought I might consider banking it to the corner pocket oh. and playing position for the three. Just the way it laid, I, I kind of liked it, especially with new cloth because you can – you can slide it in off the bottom rail. Uh, it opens up that pocket to a much bigger pocket. Okay, a nice hit there, never touching a rail on the two. And Chenehoff, when I was watching him practice prior to the match, he looked pretty comfortable. And I think it was you and I, George, were talking about it prior that he most likely did not go back to Moscow uh, since the last yeah. tournament. So really acclimated and. I'm sure it's spent a lot of time here in Griffs these last probably three plus weeks. Sure, probably been in action most of the time. Uh, uh, acclimated to the time, the temperature, the tables. Yeah. Uh, yeah and action, everything. action ready, yeah, yeah, exactly. Got his food right, whatever he, mm -hmm. he needed to find in Vegas that agrees with him or he prefers. Um, just everything should be pretty prime for, for Ruslan and uh I think he was asking if they're playing all ball fouls. I think he was addressing that with John Lehman, our, our head referee and tournament director. So he's going to open the eight. But he's going to hang the four, unfortunately. Yeah. And looks like a little swerve around the five, if he can reach it to get on the 
to get the four and maybe try to leave the cue ball in the same area yeah, going not, rail first. I'm not sure he has to really swerve it at yeah. all. I think he just goes the rail and make it catch it thick enough to not hit the nine. That's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. You want to hit it thick <laughs> enough to where the nine doesn't come into play. Well, this, this is a little interesting play here. I think he's got to go for the cross side. Um, there is a a little bit of a safety, I guess, chipping the five to the back rail and trying, but you're not really getting much of a snooker. Well, with a cross with a cross side, he could still bring the cue ball to about where it is now to, on the inside of the nine, possibly to get a shot, maybe a two way. Yeah, uh, I think I, he, I, I think he'll bump the nine. I think if he'll just go ahead and play for the make, concentrate on the make, and, and he actually got by the nine, which is a really nice shot. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the best decision. Uh, we can see the Fargo rating, even though I'm guessing uh, with Mr. Ko Kobayashi being from Hawaii, uh, the Fargo could be a hair off just because there's not a lot of great players in Hawaii anymore. To bump like his up. Yeah, exactly. It, it was, yeah, well, exa so. Exactly. Here's a state champ, two-time a nine ball, two-time an eight ball. So he's an all, pretty much an all-around player. And a 667 Fargo, which is... Uh, not horrible or nothing. Not horrible, but, but it's just, just a regional player. Right, right. But and really. So a lot of that, I think, sometimes goes with how much time he can spend playing in these types of events. Because I actually did get to watch him play. In um, the Diamond, uh, in the Las Diamond, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, and he played pretty well. He, of course, didn't have you know deep, deep results in the tournament. But a lot of them didn't. Well. No, of course, yeah. Yeah, we had a great field out there. Yeah, so I think a little bit of that... Um, with the Fargos, sometimes, you know, the time you get to spend with what type of players you get to play with. Well, if you didn't join us for the first match, this is a race to nine, uh, double elimination. The extended race final to 11 will, of course, be uh, uh, three days from now, two days from now. Touchy little shot here because he's trying to just bump it and leave it kind of on top of the eight. Um, yeah, and he can't really reach it real well. This is where you got to be able to shoot away from the eight a little bit bank mm -hmm. it twice to the back rail kind of where the the template is and draw the cue ball up the side rail he's going to try to come up on top of the 10 or just hit it and well i like this, this play way. better than than his original plan now he may have given up a shot and he definitely gave up some some type of shot rail first i believe now the sure key, looks like it. The key to this rail first, even though you want to hold position, is don't baby it. Become All right, it looks like he can get at it, but you t tend to make it bounce off the rail more when you hit it. See how it tried to bounce a little wow, bit? Yeah, it did. you got to try and sacrifice a little bit tougher shot on the nine just to guarantee the eight. But he didn't dribble it, you know, like try to hold straight in on the nine. That was, right. that was good. He didn't mind the extra angle on Right, that. and it just makes the eight a little bit better. It'll slide down the rail a little more for you. Nice shot there. And so immediately, I believe it was Kurt that broke the balls. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruslan has taken a, a break advantage if he pockets his 10 ball, once he pockets his 10 ball, and steals that all-important first game. This is an alternate break format. Um, we are at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're on a nine-foot diamond table with uh, Cyclop, Hyperion Balls, Simonis Cloth, and we're using the Outsville Rack template for all matches. Maybe. 16 players uh, were seated. The top 16, according to Fargo rate, were seated. Well, and then your screen there, you can see Jeffrey DeLuna and Jung Lin Chang. Jung Lin Chang. Uh, in the, in oh, the that's screen, so you can see just, that's just a, a couple there, and we'll get you the outer match of scores. But the it's only a 30, 30 plus man field, but the quality is unbelievable. Yeah, that's a, that, that's one heck of a match there. You have the second seeded player, which is Jung Lin Chang, and then Jeffrey DeLuna, who was the seventh seeded player. So, uh, top seven uh, as far as Fargo Ray goes. Uh, matched up in, in in their first day, and uh, and he kind of came across him there. We talked about at the World Ten Ball not long ago that to get the balls really off track where you want them to go. Say you break from the right and you come across the left side of the one. That's when you can really miss the the desired ones you're trying to make on the break. Um, and that's kind of what happened here with 
to Chinahoff, and I'm not sure it's hurt him so bad. This is a tough shot. He, yeah. he, he's got to hold the cue ball right there. Oh, he's going he's, for it. He's yeah. going for it. He's going to try and mass the cue ball down the rail. So watch the cue ball jerk a little bit. Oh. I'm surprised he did not call for a referee. Well, he was shooting away from it decently. I'm mm -hmm. not so sure the cue tip didn't slide off the cue ball a little bit and go into the, like, misdir misdirect the cue ball right, into right. the wrong side of the one, like a little partial miscue. Ruslan may have to play for some type of carom shot on the 2-5 and then take some chance uh, from there because he doesn't have much angle on this one ball. And you don't want to get careless here trying to make a great shot and you don't end up getting position. You get snookered behind the 10 or miss this ball trying to get position on the 2-5 because the carom on the 5 is not hard. Looks like he's going around the 4. Yeah, I really think he should look at Better off to take a chance shooting the two and, and carry him the five and let the two uh, bang around rather than, yeah. than make some silly mistake here. I sure like that a lot better than, than, than uh, trying to maneuver the ball around, you know, the eight or the four to get to the two and well, then stretch that angle. Yeah, well, the game is about risk sometimes, but you have to be able to evalu evaluate when. So he, I think he's just going to draw it back for the carom shot here. Okay, nice shot. Now, the one thing he did do is he said, if I'm going to settle for this carom, I'm going to get as good on it as I can. I'm not going to shoot it from the end rail up there. Right. So I, that, that's pretty impressive. I like the way he drew that back and used the, used the spin to move closer to the two ball. Well, and, you know, there's a lot of balls up table, which is scary because you can't roll this one. You have to shoot it with some speed, whether you draw it or follow off the two. Um, but you just got to take a chance. Main thing is here, don't miss the five trying to get the cue ball up table also. Like, you know what I mean? Like, carry mm -hmm. them off the two and try to cut the five to the hole so much. You can miss it that way. Make sure you make the five and, and, and just just take a little chance on where, where the two's going to end up. See, oh, he, was trying to he, get was the, trying he was trying to get the cue ball up. And so... See. I like him shooting that real soft, actually. Well, you don't want to be shooting dead off the end rail. You want to make sure you're up maybe four mm -hmm. or five inches up at least, mm -hmm. or a diamond. Um, he was just trying to get the maximum out of it. Trying to, it's just hard to imagine how much you can cut that second ball. Um, he cut the five words backwards. See where it ended up? Yep. Well, we are sponsored by Q Sports International, Cyclops Balls, Discount Custom Apparel, Griff's Billiards, JB Cases, Kamui, Predator, and Simona's Cloth. And as you can see, Kurt Kobayashi is using a Predator uh, Revo shaft. Yeah, well, this isn't going to bode too well. He's going to be back underneath that four ball, most likely. And yeah. Again, this is one that. Just get the snooker. You got the nine there also. So the jump shot shouldn't be so easy. Um, don't try to get him froze like up on, on the four now. He's queuing down on the ball. So that tells me maybe he's doing something else. Drawing him behind the, the three. Oh, the three, that's the three ball there. Oh, he's no, cutting he's it cutting in. he's cutting it in. Going for the, he's going for the whole enchilada. And he's gotten, left himself a sharp angle on this four ball. Well, it shouldn't be any problem after you looked at the last one. <laughs> the position could be a little bit funny, but I don't think he's thick enough to run into, maybe he is to run into the eight. He'd love to run into the eight here. And the reason why is maybe he doesn't get position, but he's definitely not going to get snookered by running into the eight. Okay. I had more actually and ran into the, into the four itself. Yeah, he soft spun it. And this isn't bad. He can just level out here and just dink this in and kind of go into the nine with the cue ball. But don't be afraid to bump the nine here. We are playing CSI rules, which means the two ball and the three ball will be on the corners. Uh, yeah. the ten ball does not count on the break, and he's left himself a little touchy shot on this four ball. It looks like it uh, got up close to that corner. And that's why pocket. I thought he would, he threw that ball in. I thought he would just naturally cut it and run the cue ball into the nine. That way there's no problems on the four. He's got to play safe here, George. Just, yeah. Straight up behind the eight. Yeah, and no it good leaked out. The well, here's uh, Kurt's, uh, Kurt's chance to steal one back. 
quick five ball run. Well, this Six is close. Run. Oh, yeah. This is close. And the one thing about it being close is it's the type of shot you can cheat the pocket a little bit to help move the cue ball. But if he's hooked a little like he is, oh, this I'd is, yeah. I'd rather go rail first here. Well, that ball's out quite is a way. Is it out quite yeah, a way? It's it looks, out quite looks, a way. Well, he did it right. <laughs> Well, one good thing is it wasn't offered much position, but at least he can put himself in a position where he's a favorite now uh, with a safety of some sort. This isn't easy either, though, with the ball being froze. Is he calling the five ball just in case? I, I think so, and I think that's correct because I think the safety, you're kind of floating the ball past the seven anyways. Oh, he hit it thin. Yeah, I thought he was okay. going up there. So I, 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 that's why I said just in case. Yeah, I, right. thought, I thought he was going upstairs. And let's see when he, he can probably do the same thing here. Go to the left side of the five and go back up uphill, up table. Is he going to play the cue ball or the five? I uh, thought he may just bank the five down there. And is he cutting this in? He's using he maybe cutting English. this in with inside English. Touch of inside, as they say. Well, he's okay. going to, oh, look at this. Uh, he's going to give up a shot, a real first at least. Oh, well, Kurt kind of smiled a bit, so maybe a little bit touchy, but I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, Kurt wanted a shout out to uh, his mentor, the late Hawaiian Brian. Hawaiian Brian. Uh, First time I ever saw him, he was, it was in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, at a place called BG McGee's. Really nice place. And he was playing a, a challenge match, you know, an action match mm -hmm. against. He was playing. The first time I actually looked at the other guy, also Mark Tad. Oh wow! And they were I playing. Mark uh, Tad. Yeah, they were playing yeah. even one pocket, like 300, 400 a game over there. And I was. Uh, I believe I just turned 19 years old. Don't know what happened, but I'm going to kind of guess that Mark Tad got the best of that. Actually, one, I, being, I, being it there's one pocket. I think they broke even there, but went on to play at another pool room after this one had closed. Um, and then got to hang around Brian a little bit there in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I went for a few trips, uh, stayed a month, and played a lot of pool at his place. He was a heck, a heck of a player from what I oh, understand. Yeah. I never really saw him in his prime, of course. Mm -hmm. Always heard great stories about him. And now, Kurt from from Hawaii and ties it up at one apiece. It's your break, yes. He's <laughs> it's your break. No, it's one. you won the lag. Well, we've got some great matches. Dennis Hatch, oh, two wow. Americans playing Donnie Mills with Dennis leading two to one. DeLuna and Schuff haven't gotten the first one on the board yet. Well, now, now it looks like it looks like DeLuna is up one nothing. Uh, Jung Lin Chang uh, over Danny Olson, two to one. One heck of a match going on there. And then Dennis Okuyo. Over leading, Jimmy Henry. Yeah, over Henry, three to one. John Mora and Chris McDaniel tied at one apiece. Uh, the youngster, Chang Lu, I believe, uh, is up 2-0 over Juan. Is that correct? Isn't that Kevin Chang? Oh, that's Kevin Chang. Yeah, it's Kevin oh, yeah, Chang? it is. Yeah, yes, it is. I'm sorry. Over uh, uh, Kelson Juan. Yeah, and then we have Darren Appleton and Tyler Steyer to round it up at 0-0. Zero, zero, uh, zero. Zero, zero. No, I don't have any info on that Kelson Juan. You know anything about him? No, I sure don't. Okay. Now, those balls, he hit those well, and they didn't really react that well. Um, so it may have made a boo-boo with the rack. Mm. Hard to do with the template rack. Usually they're, uh, you know, I guess maybe you take it for granted and you walk away and maybe something moves. Well, but they I, don't usually move. Yeah, they don't move, but I think there is a way to set them in that's a little better than other ways. Okay. Kind of experienced that, it seems like. Tough rollout position here and a tough ball to thin. Not a whole lot of guarantees on getting behind balls. Um, be interesting to see what decision. This is the ball I like trying to get him behind the four, I believe. Or is he curving this ball? 
I think he's cutting the one and trying to bank it up and get the cue ball behind the four. Yeah. That's, I think that was the best percentage with all the congestion down table. And he found some success with the one ball behind uh, traffic on the bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a reasonable kick shot, though. You can see a lot of positive things happening. Him kicking some type of way, one row at it. Is the side pocket in the way of, of what's so natural, though, George? For the natural, uh, I think he can hit just above it. or uh, Barely or catch can, a piece. Yeah, or, barely catch oh, a he, piece. Yeah, yeah, just right there. Should come up. Yeah, nice. I thought it might come back up and uh, get behind the snuggle up against the 10. Uh, 36 players in uh, this I'll year's jump at this, U.S. I Open. Think. Yes. I think this is one even I jump at. I th maybe not. I mean, the kick's pretty easy, but the two's in the way a little of where you want to kick at. So, oh, he's calling the 10. This ain't bad, actually. If he catches a piece of the 10, the five's, the five's on. 5-10. Yeah. I never even looked at that. Yeah, just top English. He's going to snuggle in behind the six, though. Yeah. And guess what? He'll take another shot at that 5-10. Uh, Once he gets to the three yeah, ball, Yeah, he I can't think. really even tie anything up. Yeah. I'm, I may. I mean, just give him ball a hand, kick the 10 ball out of there? Um, I might kick softly at the 10. Yeah, just to get it out of the way. Just, just so tie it up the 5, really. I take my chance that if I rub the 10, that I'm going to knock it to where it's not playable, and I might mm -hmm. cover up the 5 still. Okay. It looks like it's a little tough to kick. Oh, he's kicking in between the 6-8. This isn't horrible. Okay. Got a little that airborne, was. though. Ouch. So Close. there's that 5-10 you were talking about. Yeah. And really the 2 to the 3 just lays real nice yes. to get to the 4. And you don't have to get back down table very far for the 5-10. And it's high percentage 5-10 combo. Now, I think a lot of amateurs would probably get on that 2-3, uh, get the 2, probably play shape for the 3-5 instead of just running the 3 balls. Oh, Do you yeah. like that better? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure, sure. Yeah. same here. Yeah, that's a, just, the three ball combination. That yeah, just bring this up a little bit for the three in the side, then the four, and then you come back for the a clean shot at the five ten. He might have come back a little too far. Well, he's all right, but he's on the rail, so that's the problem here. Can he just roll it, or has he got to elevate? He's got to elevate, so he's made this a little more difficult, and that's just from the position from the one to the two. Okay talked about you don't have to get very close to the 510 it appears so no. just anywhere on the side of the table he's on now got one big stroke though he's a big man anyways but uh oh he's all right though it's not going to get there i don't think pretty fast that was probably a pretty sh pretty big shock to a system that cue ball getting even close to the side pocket but a pretty easy 5-10 to get another lead at 2-1 and break. Ooh. Oh, it wasn't as easy as it looked, apparently. Oh, okay. I Big break for Kurt. Yeah, I think that may have been that situation we talked about. The Predator 10 ball, I think it was filler. The friction on it. Yeah, yeah you, you, you missed the shots. If, if you that. throw outside yeah. English on a combo, that, well, even when there's a gap and there was a pretty decent gap there, well, the ball didn't have time to turn over, and it really grabs the... Grabs that second object ball uh, heavily. Oh, he's okay. A, I thought for a too second. Much speed though, so he's going to have to do some things here. This, Back and forth. Yeah, and this is something you'd like to say is fairly, uh, very doable still. But mm -hmm. th you have to pay attention. You don't want to get elevated over the ten, shooting the seven or the eight. So you got to have a nice, nice speed here, and he does. And he didn't want to have to run into the nine with the cue ball either when cutting the seven. I think he's found the next location. He's going forward two rails. Yeah, and this one you go broader. Don't put as much right English. Go with more high and just go a little longer away. That way you're not going right by the ten with the cue ball. Let it go straighter towards yeah, the rail. Like yeah, like he did just there. Like that. That's Perfect. great. Yeah. And the angle doesn't get so sharp on you so quick, meaning if you overhit it a little bit, you could get a little thin on the eight to where um, you have to do a little bit to, to hold position on the nine. Well, 
He tried to hold it a little more than that. He just couldn't, couldn't hit it soft enough. But he's okay. Now, would you prefer shooting this going up and all the way up and back? No, I just put right English and just play right to the lower right-hand okay. corner. Okay. I mean, if you felt good about left, but it doesn't grab as well with the new felt to come easy. See that shot's just yep, just lays there. Yeah, just, just lays perfect. Don't worry so much. Like on a slow table, you're going to do that. On a fast table, you're going to do that. So mm -hmm. just know you're going to kind of adjust. Don't worry so much saying, man, this fast table is making me want to move the cue ball more. In it. Right. Gotcha. But now, 2-1 Kobayashi. And here's a case where, you know, 100 and, what is it, 122 points difference in Fargo rating. Fargo would kind of say that, uh, he should win this race nine to four, nine to, f at worst nine to five. Yeah. Um, he's trailing two to one. Yeah, and I, I think more with the rating on the Fargo or any rating, it should be more like percentages of winning races to nine, like we're in mm -hmm. more than a score. I think a score is a very hard thing mm -hmm. to predict on the ratings. Well, uh, yeah, I think what I was getting at when I when when I said it that way is that a hundred points difference in Fargo pretty much says that the guy with the higher rating is almost twice as good as the guy with uh, the, the, the lower rating. So it would be a, a race, an uh, 8 to 4 race with 100 points difference is very realistic. Right. And that's why I, I guessed at 9-5, nine 9-4 nine uh, because it's 120 points. But at a 667, he's a very capable player. Oh, absolutely. And he can hold his own. And so all it's going to take is a roll here, a roll there. Or a hot flash by Kurt. Sure. You or know. opportunity taken advantage exactly. of just like what happened here. And to, uh, to, to move it up. And here he is again. Uh, Ruslan broke the balls. Ruslan broke perfect. the balls. And got and kissed in right at the last second uh, with the one over the pocket. So what looked like uh, Ruslan getting a, an opportunity to tie this match now could be a two-game deficit and uh, Kobayashi breaking in game mm -hmm. five. But it is very early in the match. I mean, three games have gone by, and uh, we're into the fourth game. And, of course, uh, both players extremely capable of holding their own and making a strong comeback. Okay, it'd be interesting to see if he tries to just maybe soft spin this to hold for the five or if he goes ahead and lets the cue ball run. Now, this is where I might make a decision to let the cue ball run. Just because the table is a little faster and the spin, I don't want to soft spin too many balls. And so he did it just right. Yeah, I think that was a good decision. Uh, you would say to yourself, oh, I don't want to run past position, but sometimes the equipment or sometimes just a certain shot will tell you to do so. You can see, though, there's not much struggle when it comes to technique. Very simple, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice swing, nice, nice uh, timing. Uh, he's elevating here and he wants yeah. to hold an angle, but this is where again Yates so accessible. Don't worry. See, oh, yeah, exactly. that's why I no, say don't I, worry about getting so good on the seven. You can handle a lot. You're not just roll the ball in. You're not going to be straight in. You're not going to be on the rail. And the eight's over the side. Yeah, I definitely like laying the cue ball parallel to the table and or just taking the shot. Yeah, and, and, and I understand nerves sometimes tell you you want to have that little elevation, but you have to realize the better way to play it and what's in front of you. Yeah, if wow. the eight's in a bad position that I have to do a certain thing, then that's I something. Agree. Exactly, you know. I, exactly. <clears throat> then, you, then, you, then you elevate and take that shot, but you can't the way make that the ball layout missable. Yeah. You can't make it missable. And that is the kind of ones that with a 100-point uh, Fargo difference that can turn a match around mm -hmm. quickly at two to two. Well, we're now we're tied instead of having a two-game lead. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Ruslan sure. uh, at three to one, believe it or not. And the frustration you speak about after making an error like that, too. In yeah. His mind, fresh in his mind. Well, Kurt seems like the type that can shake things off as far as that. Um, but it's also a matter of uh, you know, Ruslan, we all done it. Oh, is this that type of match where my opponent gets all these rolls? You know. Well, it wasn't. Yeah, my opponent got the rolls there. It was uh, actually he'll he'll understand it's his mistake. Big one there though, and instead of leading three to one, uh, we're tied at two, and Kurt's breaking the balls. Uh, giving the idea of what's going on around the room here, we have other matches going with uh, Dennis Hatch and Donnie Mills tied at three. 
Jeffrey DeLuna over Brandon Schuff, 2-0. Jun Lin Chang uh, over Danny Olson, 3-1. Dennis Arcoyo over Jimmy Henry, 6-1. John Mora leading Chris McDaniel, 2-1. And uh, Kevin Chang, Chang over uh, Kelsa, Kelson Juan, 4-0. And Darren Appleton trailing Tyler Steyer, 1-2. I'll tell you if there's a, a great field, of course, but if, again, the Brack just didn't quite act like the, you see the 10 up table, you see the, all these clusters, uh, much different looking rack, even though they're open, meaning they spread, uh, not the consistency that we're used to seeing from the mm -hmm. 10 ball break, but the guy you mentioned right there in the middle of that, that screen with that tablet with the scores, that Dennis Urcullo, I think that's a guy. You know, I like to pick an American always. And besides the Americans that, that are here and I think are going to be fighting for this title when it comes down to the end, uh, that's a guy I think keep an eye on. For this tournament? Yeah. And, and We missed him a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, he wasn't here. Wasn't here for the event and a couple of events. And he looked he looks hungry. He looks in a good frame <laughs> of mind, too. Talked to him a bit already. And one of the big things is this, this is a ten thousand dollar added tournament uh, with sixty four players. We have thirty six, uh, but in addition to that money added for this tournament, uh, the highest finisher, uh, combined finisher for the ten ball and the eight ball, uh, has a thirty five hundred dollar purse along with uh, invite to the world ten ball in March at the end of March uh, next year. And that's a that's a hundred thousand dollar added predator ten ball event world ten ball, and there's fifteen hundred for second place. Right. In those two. And that's what the uh, all around here mm -hmm, for at the, all the U.S. Around. Opens. And uh, Chinahoff getting going pretty quickly here in game five. And after uh, again, what doesn't look like the normal spread off of Kobayashi's break would be a little concerning to me. Okay, a little funny on the stroke there. A little deceleration almost, mm -hmm. like borderline. Like he was afraid to overrun it. <laughs> now he's got to come with a shot here for the, to get on this eight ball. And I'm not sure he came over far enough. Oh, the seven. <laughs> I was looking at the eight. Sorry, folks. making pretty quick work of this. Yeah, this is where he'll hit a bottom on this ball where I'll and come across like that where I usually hit a high ball and just play for a little longer. Not bother with the side pocket at well, all. Well, just I, not bother with hitting down mm -hmm. on the ball so much. But I like that, actually. I, yeah, I it just seems to me a, you get used to doing that. That's just like a routine thing every, every time. Very easy to execute. Very easy to execute under pressure, too. Well, look, looking at the score, instead of having it three one, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, we're looking at three two. Mm -hmm. And breaking the balls. And breaking and, the balls. And so the last was a last major break mistake. broke them very well. It got kissed in, and, and Kirk couldn't quite take advantage. Got quite some players here. We had uh, thirty six players, like I mentioned earlier, and 23, 23 of those thirty six players have a Fargo rating north of 800. So that says quite a bit right there as to uh, the strength of this field. And Griff's is here in Las Vegas is just full of full of top notch players. I didn't realize they're a little Mini expansion next door for the pool room, huh? Yeah, uh, Mark was telling me about it just a little bit ago. They're going to uh, take out the wall where the bar is and open up that bar to a circular bar and have a like a sports lounge on the other side. That should really add add a lot of space and um, ambience to the place. Extend his kitchen probably a little bit there too. Yeah, he probably could use the room. Yeah, he could use the room. Busy place and, mm -hmm. and really a great break here in game number six by Ruslan making. Uh, three on the break, and 
Okay, did he get enough on that? Is he going to get by the eight? Okay, nice shot. And Ruslan sometimes, I think, can get a little ahead of himself, meaning get in a nice, a little much of a rhythm and overlook a little bit at times mm -hmm. just because he's been such a great player for since a young age. I mean, he really um, knows the game very well and uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. That's not what I'm getting at. But right. just at times can get ahead of himself when there's a problem. Well, you mentioned he, he was. You, you were thinking he was a, uh, a junior champion somewhere along the lines. Oh yeah, well, yeah. He, he was. He's just been a great player. Just been playing, you know, Q sports since a very young age, and has played him well for a long time. He's sponsored by Mez Kamui and MKBS. Yeah, he'll draw into the ten here. Got to make sure he doesn't hit it a little thin, and the ten comes back into play. Okay, he decided just to ease it. Just making sure the 10 didn't get away from him or the cue ball. See if he plays one rail for the corner or the side. Going for the side. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Very natural. Even if he overruns it, he's got an easy access, easily accessible nine ball for that pocket. And, and it's, yeah. And it's actually, at that point, you keep the speed better coming back for the side than you do in the corner on that one. Sure. Especially on a, on a fast table, yeah, table yeah. like this, yeah. Looking great. Okay, so that's cost him definitely a few. Yeah, that mistake. That mistake by uh, Kurt elevating on that, uh, was it a seven ball? Uh, it was actually, yeah, the seven, seven ball. ball. Yeah. Oh, and actually, the six ball getting to the seven oh, right. is what yeah. it was because the eight was over the side. Right. And has uh, cost him the game he would have won plus three games that his opponent won. I'm sorry, two games at his opponent one. Yeah, and you just get an eerie so feeling see. when he started to elevate. Uh, when I saw the shot, I was wondering if he was going to elevate, and then he started to elevate, and I was just, I don't know if I jinxed him or not, but it's just one of the no, things no, you, no. you just kind of peeks it, out at you like, oh, well, I don't, is this necessary right here? Well, actually, uh, or, and, uh, now oh, he lost the cue ball, and he complicated things by yeah. scratching. But getting back to, to, to that eerie feeling, you know, sometimes, especially after watching a lot of really high-level players play, you see some a player like Kurt, for instance, you know, 650 to 700 range, uh, do something that you don't agree with necessarily, mm -hmm. and you see the problem, you see what could happen, and it happens. Oh, so yeah. it's not a jinx, it's just a matter of looks like it might, it probably will, and it did. Okay, he got a little thin here, but still okay. This is a shot he's really good at, pinching the cue ball back without letting it get away from him also. And that's that big long swing mm -hmm. that really helps with that. It's, a, it's not the easiest timing to get down mm -hmm. at time, you know, if, if, if it's not kind of in you. Right. Um, but for him, he's a six foot four, six foot five guy that, that swings the cue nice. Like the extension doesn't look wrong in his hands. It mm -hmm. doesn't look awkward at all. I like him doing this too, just accepting the shot. Uh, does he not like his angle here? No, I think he's okay. He's just regrouping. I think there was a little, like a little bug or something. Oh, okay. That was I was wondering what that was. Holds it pretty good. Doesn't get elevated. No, that was great. Uh, he'll just hit this with a high left. I don't think it, he's going to go back and forth, or is he just pinching it? Maybe so he's just, just pinching pinch it, it real here. soft. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're close to it like that, that's almost like it on shots you draw out two rails or you punch out two rails or you spin out two rails. When you're close to it, it's a little bit of preference um, on how you want to shoot the ball. It's whenever you start getting further distances away is whenever there's more of a standard way to shoot mm -hmm. it. This is uh, similar to the out he just had, although he uh, he killed the ball instead of running straight up and back down again. Well, he's talented in it. Like again, he's got he's a player that knows a lot of things and has a lot of different shots in his bag as well. That that's what makes him such a great. He's a great player in a lot of games. He's straight pool, rushing a mm -hmm. pyramid. 
Um, well, yeah. Eight ball player will see that talent here in a few days. And now extending the lead to three games at five to two. Let's see if we can run down some of the matches for you guys as we uh, rack the balls and see what we got here. Oh, let's see. Dennis Hatch and Donnie Mills are tied at four. Jeff DeLuna over Brandon Schuff, three to one. Jun Ling Chang over Danny Olson, three to two. Dennis Cercoyo uh, leads six to three. So Jimmy Henry has made a little bit of a comeback on him. Johnny Mora, Chris McDaniel, three to one. John, uh, Kevin Chang, five zero over Mr. Juan. And Darren Appleton trails Tyler Steyer, one three. I hit those a little off, a little more spin, but still enough power to get get the job done as far as making balls. Mm -hmm. Tough and not position so much here. With the cue ball. Ooh, man. Yeah. There's a few places to roll out, but it's hard to get it there. Like uh, over where he's looking there for the kick. Mm -hmm. Like he has to have a nice speed because he needs to get the cue ball up the rail a little bit. He can't just kick from this pocket. That's not an easy kick at all. He needs to get the cue ball up about the middle diamond. So he's got to kick to the bottom rail and then up to the side rail there. And that's hard to hold easy. it there. Yeah, if, well, he, if he comes he, off, he's yeah, gonna you're be in trouble. Real trouble yeah. yeah. So it's just that pocket's not, I mean, you can do it from that pocket, but you're going to have to swerve by the 10 from, that's why he's going to kick up the rail some. This is pretty smart here. He needs it up by that middle diamond there. Uh, and now it's one that I don't know if I pass it or not. <laughs> I don't know that it would either, but. 5-2 down, maybe See. you do. Maybe you do. Because um, he's got to call it. He's got to call it, but I, I like the kick and sending the, the ball down, and the cue ball ends up by the 8. Yeah, and that's what he's going to try and do. Wants a fairly full hit. Uh, doesn't want a lot of speed on the cue ball. <laughs> Wants it kind of coming slowly up the side rail. And this is where as growing up at Pyramid, Pyramid really teaches you a lot of hits and a lot of different things. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he executes this almost perfectly besides making the one. And that's going to work. That's going to work. Well, I mean, he heightened yep. it. You would call it lucky, but how well did he heighten his percentages the way he hit it? He had a lot of good things that could happen. Sure. Oh, he gave it a chance. Give it all the chance he could. And I think, uh, you know, Kurt could have done the same shot. He just uh, felt like he wanted to roll the dice, I guess. Yeah, and of course, we all make mistakes, but I think Kurt's getting ultimately punished for that one mistake he's made. He's, wow. He hasn't played poorly. It's just, you know, uh, a little bit of a judgment error that, that followed that, that opened up a chance to become a physical error, but uh, man, after that, it's been it's been all all Russia. <laughs> now this is a shot with the he's going to have to shoot the three with from some distance because he needs to shoot the ten and open. Oh, is he going to play the combo? Yeah, this is this isn't bad. Oh no, he's going to he's not. He's going to shoot this and open the six and the nine with the two ball. Shoot the three probably from a little bit of distance, but that's okay. The thing here is if you're going to shoot the three from a little distance, knock the six in front of the hole here. Don't knock it real hard. Yeah, that's nice. That way position doesn't matter right. that much. Right? Just pocket the three and you're, you're in great shape. really loosened up and I, like I said whenever I watched him practice I like to watch these guys before mm -hmm. the match and mm -hmm. just to see if there's a shot that comes up that they're working on or whatever or how they're breaking but he looked really comfortable um, just kind of like he does now when he was warming up okay a little of the funny side here George. That's that side pocket position. Yeah, well, <laughs> could do not much about that, but he definitely yeah. got on the a little bit the harder side to play from. Yeah, the closer to the center he is, even below center, he's better off than being above center yeah. where he is now. 
Yeah. Now he's got a little, just a little bit of a shot. You know, some people call these a tester. Some people don't. To some of these, most of these pro players, it's just to cut down the rail. Yeah, and with a full stroke, I'm, yeah. when I teach pool, I teach people really on those cutting them down the rail. Just make sure you make a full stroke. They mm -hmm. almost become a little bit of hangers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not total throw-ins, that's for sure. There's a sh you got to pay attention to, but it seems like that full stroke really opens the pocket up on that type of shot. And as far as a full stroke's concerned, probably nobody more in the building than, than Ruslan. Mm-hmm. Got a really long uh, well, wingspan. The, br the bright thing about this is Kurt gets to break. Uh, the dark side of it is his breaks haven't uh, been productive. No, we'll just, say. Well, the four railers have, haven't really been too close. Mm -hmm. um, the second balls haven't taken the track that we normally are used to seeing, that being towards the side pockets and that being the four and the six, if you look at the rack um, here this time. Right. Mm -hmm. Two balls behind the head spot, behind the spotted, the one ball. They go Kay. right at the si side pockets. Yeah, the one from the side he's breaking on, the six should be the one you make it a little bit more often. See how they're coming straight off? Well, I think he's breaking too much of an angle. Not close. He's going to move closer to the center. Okay, well, you definitely got, he got the four railer, though. But much more, see, I think there's a gap there because every time he breaks, we see much more movement on the 10. Okay. And the 10 isn't staying around mm -hmm. the rack like 90% no, like yeah, of moved, everyone yeah. else is. So. Good observation. Okay, can't really afford, I don't think, to take a chance on breaking up to 6-9 right now, even though the angle is there. Yeah, because you might get elevated or something might get a little amiss. Yeah, and, and he really needs to not to, the rolls haven't been going his way ever since that mistake, so he really needs to get the run started and see what he can produce. Would he be better off going at that 6-9 off, off the 4 and playing well, shape for the 5? If he could have held underneath... There's a two rail angle where you just come across the mm -hmm. six nine and you glance. You know, mm -hmm. you just barely glance them, or so you go by them and still hold position. So That's what I was now, though, he's going to have to just maybe set up for a draw angle on the five to go into the six nine. Is he going with high ball here? He's going to go two rails into the six nine. Yeah, yeah. that's really risky because and that's look what happened. That's, well, yeah, I didn't. Well, the main reason is you're going two rails with a high ball, right? So by the time you get to the 6-9, the cue ball doesn't have much energy. you got to really have a thin hit for the cue ball to escape. You know, you know what I mean? Because right. they're so far away and there wasn't much angle there. So He had to have a perfect hit on that 6 ball to have a shot on the 5. Right. It had to be, and and it had to be a thin one. It had real thin, exactly. Yeah. Whether it's thin on top and the yeah. cue ball comes down for the 5 on the side or thin on the back side of it and the cue ball goes to the rail and then back out. But... Just kind of, he was pushing it a little bit there. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame him. He's trying to make something happen. And he still may. Except for that part. And this is rapidly getting away from Kurt, but he's got uh, a little bit of time to, to make some kind of a comeback here. Well, things will turn. Yeah. Normally, in a situation, it takes it would take a big blunder from from Ruslan, just because you rarely see to where you get enough rolls to turn a match. Like say Ruslan continues to maybe get kissed in on the break mm -hmm. or something, it would normally have to take a big mistake or maybe a couple big mistakes. It takes a, it, he's gonna, he, Kurt's going to need a couple of big mistakes from Ruslan. Most likely, yeah, and then some. This Especially should put him at seven. He does look pretty pretty comfortable, Ruslan does. I just noticed that big swing you're talking about. You oh, know, yeah, he's a, with well, that. he's a tall man. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I also noticed his head moves when he does that. Didn't move there. Yeah. Didn't move on the last shot. It didn't make any difference. He closed it out, cleared the walls, and now leads seven to two. And I think this is a good example, might be a good example, of the differences in the Fargo rate. And we talked about the experiences. It's not, you know, the, I think Kurt thinks that maybe he got a couple of bad rolls because he went for a breakout, hit the balls he wanted to hit, but didn't hit them right, and got hooked instead of 
you called it. You know, you said this shot's not a not, not a good shot to go after it this yeah. way because of the way they lay. And that's p- part of it, like you said, maybe not recognizing, hey, I'm mm-hmm. I'm an underdog now. He may have said, okay, I know I'm an underdog, but I'm still going to try and do this to get something going, and was just a little upset that it didn't work out mm-hmm. as you know. Okay, again, just much more. Oh, look at, look at the break. tent. Look, look at, at the tent. It just stays right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two's over the hole. It's Looking made, like going to the hill here. It's made three balls on the break, and everything is in a nice place. Three of the four of the five. He's got a good chance he'll just get heavy on the three and shoot the three four from there. Uh, that offers a nice little cut to come around a couple rails for the five. Well, if he shoots the three ball in that same corner pocket, he just pocketed that last ball in and then slides the cue ball over towards that nine. He should be in good shape for the four. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't. Oh. All right. <laughs> There's a fly running around right in front of his cue there. He tried to catch it. <laughs> Is he that fast? Yeah. Well, I don't think it. I don't know if the grasshoppers have left. I know there was a real bad infestation here in uh, yeah, Las Vegas. Exactly. I when caught a little here. bit of it last yeah. time we were here. but It was pretty bad. Okay, he's playing oh, for he's the side. side. Okay. Now, if he gets on the wrong side, he's not going to like it. No, he's fine. That's what I was talking about. Just roll it okay. forward an inch and just cut the four. That offers you perfect to come around a couple rails. Oh, he went downward. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Thing is, you, you can see what kind of control that, that shot requires. He could have really rolled forward one inch and cut the four in the lower mm-hmm. right pretty easy. Um, but I mean, there's not a wrong decision there. No, I'm there just was. offering. It was either way. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I mean, just offering kind of what player you are to move move the cue ball a little bit more in that position or take a little bit more of a shot. Right. But the thing is about if you just hold there, you always get that shot. Mm-hmm. If you overhit that the one mm-hmm. coming down for the four, you could see just another few inches. It became pretty funny. Oh yeah, exactly. And ouch! But someone's on the hill after this last ten ball shot. And I think this um, All right, let's take a look at some of these other matches here while well, we're racking the balls. Dennis Hatch and Donnie Mills are still tied at f- are fight fighting it out there at five apiece. Yeah, probably both playing a real well, a great match if they're both neck and neck like it's yeah. been. Jeff DeLuna leads Brandon Shaw 4-1. Uh, Jun Lin Chang over Danny Olson 4-3. Dennis Arcuyo has upped his lead is on the hill 8-4 over Jimmy Henry. John Mora, Chris McDaniels, John leads 3-2. Uh, Kevin Chang 9-0 over Kelson Juan. And Darren Appleton now trails Tyler Steyer 1-5. Yeah. Darren, Darren seems to be struggling a little well, bit. Yeah. Tyler's got that big 10-ball break we talked about last, well, last so week. Tell two stories just right now as far as Darren getting back into trying to get back into the mm-hmm. swing of things after some time off and and Tyler just kind of like moving up. That's yeah, just how yeah, it is and has a lot of great tools behind moving up. Yeah, Darren has to get his competitive edge back up again. Well, yeah, and it's just get polished again and mm-hmm. some mental mental work probably you know, you know I saw a little bit of frustration at times in the last event couple mm-hmm. of events so um, but again the break here for Kobayashi we saw Ruslan miss a cross corner bank but the, the 10 way up table that group of balls nothing really reacting uh, the way we expect it and now he's got a funny little kick where he's got to cr- come to the bottom uh, you know, to the top rail, excuse me, and come across the one, but the one's close. He could easily double kiss this. Yeah. If he clears it, he could leave the one ball in the middle of the head rail there and bring the cue ball down below the eight. Yeah. Missed it entirely, making sure he didn't get the double kiss. Yeah, and that was trying to get a little, t- and if you're a one pocket player, you know, though, there's a speed there where you can allow to where if you do double kiss it, it turns, it out, okay. turns out okay. Yeah, it exactly. dribbles out not as far, <laughs> but the cue ball still kind of takes the same line yeah. uh, up behind the 10 and the, the 7. Well, if you play a lot of one pocket, that shot, you're a lot more polished at it because yeah. you, you play different ways. You can play for the hole. You can play for the speed. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more happening there. Now, 
Is he going to try and go into the 10 some type of way here? This three's not as easy as it looks from this camera. Uh, if he catches or gets jacked up, he could be thin. I like him to keep staying clear. I think he can handle with the five. Five ball. Yeah, the five ball leads him, or leads play him where he has to. Oh, no, that's the seven. Excuse me. So he may play a 7-10 carom shot is what he's going to play. He'll just clear these off, get to the five. And I believe the 7-10 carom in the side is not hard. Good match, Andrew. Yeah, and really, Ruslan had a couple little errors, but one thing he's got a lot to look forward to is, oh, my, look at that. That Ouch. one kind of sprung. He, that one really shocked him there. Well, he put a last stroke on it, too, and that ball was spinning. And he dug in, the, dug he in dug there in. Yeah. quite a bit. Uh, but one thing I was going to say is just along those lines is as far as getting down and pocketing the ball and look very comfortable shooting the ball different ways, uh, I, th I think he's looked as comfortable as anybody I've seen just yet. Mm -hmm. He's had a couple errors. Uh, that's what I was going to say. A no, couple things you, he's got to clean up. About, but as far as just, like, looking very comfortable. not At the table. Yeah. Yeah. And that means a lot. Moving around. It, yeah, it does mean a lot. Uh, it means a whole bunch. Because this game is about being comfortable at the table. Yeah, and taking it, advantage of, of open opportunities and, and comfort goes a long ways with that. Because you got to figure it's going to break even at some time or another, meaning you're going to get the opportunities your opponent gets. So if you're if you're getting your job done, uh, you got a good chance. Good shot. Okay, ended up kind of thin. So he's going to have to have good speed here to hold for that 7-10 carom because I don't think it's like makeable from anywhere. Yeah, he wants to get the cue ball right back where it's at now. Right. Okay, yeah, I think he has. He's good. He's good. Well, this is a big break for him, but his opponent's going to get some, uh, some breaks, too. Like four of them. Okay, he had to throw it in with a little bit of right English. That was huge. That just ended a seven-game streak by uh, Ruslan Chinahov. The Siberian Express. Mm. Good guy, too. I really like mm -hmm. him a lot. Uh, spent a lot of time with him last year, just off and on. Uh, mm -hmm. He was in America a lot. We were at the same events and spent some time in Moscow. Um, a good I'm, guy, just a good dude. That must be awesome for you to get to travel to the, the, those countries like that. Well, I used to do it a ton, and yeah. then just here in the last couple of years, um, Picked it up again? Well, it's funny. It's just a little bit different circumstance mm -hmm. from a, more of a work aspect. I uh, got to play a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but more, like I said, a different circumstance. But it's still being around pool, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Well, folks, if you don't know it, I'm sitting with one of the best coaches around. Mm. And uh, also a 1999 World Pool Association World Nine Ball Champion. Who, me? No, no, I finished second. I was runner-up, excuse uh, runner me. Runner-up, right. Uh, my U.S. Roommate, Open one-pocket champion, a <laughs> U.S. Open nine-ball champion. So yeah. uh, uh, we got somebody that knows what is going on, what these guys are thinking, feeling, and attempting at the table. Well, I don't think he'll pass up on this 1-7. Now, the safety is laying really nice, but Ruslan, like most of the great players, if it's a pretty good opportunity, he's going to take it. That's another thing for a big man. He doesn't mind hitting the ball light if mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. So he's got some touch. Yeah, well, and that's, you know, that's a straight pool in him. And that's what we yeah. talked. We talked exactly. about it last time. The bigger guys at the top levels just seem to all have the sweetest strokes. You know, not all of them, but a lot of them. Is he going to get by this? He's going to shoot the gap, I believe. Wow. Right there. I could have easily turned sour. And now he's got a funny shot. Uh, yeah, I would be moving that. That's for sure. He's got a funny shot. He's probably got to just take the angle because he's a little elevated here. So he's probably got to take the angle on the three and just move the cue ball back for the four. And uh, the elevation yeah. and the uncomfortable bridge. Yeah. Cost him that ball. You think he tried to do a little bit too much by coming up that far? Well, that's what I was kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. I think he had to play from there. He just kind of, there wasn't the acceleration there. You know, it just wasn't, he kind of guided it is what I kind of felt like. Now, in this shot right here, uh, Jeremy, would you prefer to go between the, shoot the gap between the 9 and the 10 and shoot the 3 in the side or do exactly that? I like that. Okay. I like that a lot. Okay. I'm 
pretty impressed to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, there's a lot of real solid players that, that don't recognize running into balls, mm -hmm. oh, how, yeah. so, how it helps you sometimes. Sure. He's going to have to make a little shot on the four, though. And this may go too far and get really steep, or it may get straight in. Oh, see, oh, it kind of stood there. A piece of chalk on the table there, I think. Yeah. A little, little, little uh, tiny little piece of something on the table. If this match ends quickly, uh, I'll go up there and brush that off real quick. <laughs> and Tyler Steyer up 6-1 to one now over Darren Appleton and Chang up 9 nothing. DeLuna and Schuff at 4-2 with DeLuna leading. Donnie Mills ahead 6-5. to five. Okuyo on the hill over Henry, 9-4. to four. A Big shot here for Mr. Kobayashi. He's overcut it, but he got it down. They just updated that Okuyo match, and he's won 9-4. to four. And Kurt can't get a break, he feels like. He hit a pretty nice shot there and, and went a long in. ways to get not much angle. Again, I, I, I truly believe it's, it's that um, experience, the level that he's playing at. He's making things happen, though. I mean, he's moving the cue ball around, but now he's faced with a little bit longer shot. But he, this is very makeable. Now, yeah, does that, he, does that, he hold it, or does he come off uh, across the 10 for the 9? I uh, don't think he cross it from that much distance. Yeah. I don't think there's as much angle as we think. So he'll draw underneath the 10, I believe. But I like what he did there. He, he simplified the shot on the on the 5. and. Oh, he did punch it out there. Nice yeah. shot there. That's a hard shot to take on sometimes mm -hmm. just because of that right there. It's because you want to hit it hard enough to get across the 10. you got to do that. Mm -hmm. But then on the fast table, it can get away from you. So probably uh, another touchy another shot. Another touchy shot, <laughs> sure. Back and forth, and he doesn't have to land on the 10 ball just right no, either. Natural goes towards the side. Yeah. So he's probably going to... Trying to flick this in with a little bit of English, maybe. A little bit of left. He uh, did it. Nice shot. And cue ball's going to run him straight down to the corner. Same pocket. But see the difference in these two players is you can see how comfortable Ruslan looks and how uh, uh, kind of uncomfortable, you might say, uh, Kurt looked on that last rack. Yeah, but the position was difficult. Almost every shot kind of exactly. got funny. So yeah. I'm pretty impressed so. with him keeping his composure and kind of taking it one shot at a time mm -hmm. uh, with his opponent on the hill. This is the winner's side, so yes. both these guys will be back regardless of our outcome. Both players had to buy their first round, and they meet in the second. Uh, Chenehov was, I believe, the tenth seeded player. Yes, he was. Ten of the sixteen that were seated. Kurt saying hi to a friend or a fan of some sort. Again, a lot of movement on the ten ball. Um, it just doesn't clusters. seem like yeah anything like the other guys uh, and I, I don't think it's from the actual break style or technique mm -hmm. I think it's more from something that's going on a little bit more uh, with the racking could be wrong I did not note where he broke from I was I had noted that he's breaking more of an angle than straight on and yeah a little ball, bit but a ten little ball, bit I like more of a st almost a straight on just a couple inches off center yeah, but you can get close to the same results from anywhere inside anywhere? the diamond. Okay. Okay, and he was a good five inches inside the diamond. So you get out. That's why when we played a few tournaments with the break box mm -hmm. and ten ball, you ha it was an outside break box. Oh, outside the. It break was box? outside the diamonds okay. to the rail. Uh, same thing with like the World Pool Series with the eight ball rules. Oh, okay. Initially, I, they may have changed it in the later tournaments, but their initial rules were. You had to break eight ball from outside the box. So it made it a little more random. A lot more random, actually. Yeah. Well, Chinahoff going to the jump, jump cue. cue. Only the second time we've seen it. I think Kurt used it once. Now, if he, if he 
If you were at the table, Jeremy, where would you consider pushing to here? Or would you consider the jump shot? Um, I mean, you got a little bit. This is a tough place to find a place to push. Yeah, I may push. I don't know. That's, this is with the five six the way it is. I don't mind the jump shot at all. Okay. I think it's probably it's not one I don't want to roll out. I don't want my opponent to knock it in. I, I would rather take a chance at knocking it in. I think. See, I was thinking up on top rail. Okay. Doesn't want to give up an early ten ball though. He's going to. He's going to give nope. up some type of. Well, I mean. It's not uh, an easy one, but he, he may cut the one over by the 8-9 and on the other side of the 8-9 and play, and play the, the 10. Other, yeah. How about, uh, well, it's kind of a steep angle. Cut the one into the 10, but then you hang it up. Hold the cue ball on the 8-9, on the but that's, yeah. that's awful. Off. That's asking that's, a lot. That's, that's thin and yeah, soft. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> but, asking a lot. you know, you don't figure to hang the 10. I, you could give up the mustard here, meaning you could knock the one to where – and hang the 10 to where your opponent might win from there if you miss it. But I think this is worth it for Kurt. I think it lays fairly natural. Oh, he just caught it too thin is all. Oh, he's going to find himself in a world of hurt here. Yeah, I think so. What, what do you do here? You cut the one and, cut and, the one and bump and the 5-6, five, 5-7, five, I mean. Can you can kind of draw the ball down uh, two rails up against the 8-9? Yeah. Put a lot of movement on something that's not so necessary. Okay. I think he can cut the one towards the template rack. Oh, he's going to shoot your shot, which is a, a safe. Oh, is he calling the 10? He's going for the 10 and trying to play safe at the same time. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. I thought he would just cut the mm -hmm. one and run into mm -hmm. that bottom ball, which was the 5 or the 7, and just kind of open them balls and hold them behind it. The reason I like what he did there. Uh, two-way cover? Well, not the two-way cover, but you had a lot more room for error with the speed of the ball. Right. You know, you could, still, you could still find cover with the speed, and it could really be beneficial if you got up against the nine. Okay, went for it there. Table has gotten a little bit bouncy, it seems like, in the last uh, hour of this match or so. Mm -hmm. Like the ball, it scratched on, on Ruslan mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Just seemed like that one there, too. It went up and down pretty easy. Now Ruslan's just got to come behind the two, most likely, with the cue ball. Wow. Tyler Steyer, 8-1 to one over Darren Appleton. All the other matches going about the, they're they're pretty close. Hatch and Mills six six, Deluna and Brandon Shaw five three Deluna, and uh, here comes Kurt with a shot here. Yeah, he's gonna cut at this. He's going for it, huh? Oh yeah. Throw in between the three five and around. Oh, well, he caught it, but he caught it well. And it's just a matter of if the three passes the five. If not, he'll have to drop down. In which case, a ten ball might come into play. Maybe, no, not, quite, not maybe. really. I don't think, but he still has to have good speed coming down, though. So, he's looking to put it on the spot. Big shot here for Kurt. And he's hit it nicely. Yeah, in a good position now. He's the six is very accessible, so position on the five is don't have to do too much. Just a stop shot. I think he's going to draw the ball a little, little more than I thought he was going to. Get closer to that. I'd well, like to be where the cue ball is now. Yeah, and if he can come out and have it handle an angle as well to move the cue ball to the rail from the six to the seven. So it's kind of preference again. If you want mm -hmm. to dig a little more on the five and get heavier on the six, that's fine. Or bounce out more and run the cue ball a little bit off the six. 
kind of a little more if you're a drawer of the cue ball, more of a follower. Mm -hmm. A follower of the cue ball, excuse me. If you're given the choice, you'd rather follow than draw? It's weird. It's just the shot, what yeah, it is. It's you the know? shot, yeah. It is. Because some of them I certainly like cueing down on mm -hmm. the ball much more than I do. And the bridge, there's, there's so much that comes into play. It just, yeah. you know, I, f I kind of feel like with a follow shot, you just seem to control your speed so much better than than than, uh, than the draw. Oh, that's for sure. It's a more of a, it's almost always more of a natural path. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not trying to manufacture something, so touch is always going to be a little better, or generally anyways. Yeah, he's looking good here. And he's looked like he's calmed down a little, too. The strokes calmed down a little. He mm -hmm. stayed in position a lot better this rack. Put, put a little three-pack, well, not three-pack, but three games together. Yeah, no, he'll be breaking off here. Yeah. Uh, no, excuse me, it's Ruslan's break. That's right, that's right. Uh, Kurt won the, won the won lag. The lag. So he'll be breaking when the score is tied. And he now has five games. Rusin to break for the match. And uh, we got Hatch and Donnie Mills still within a game. John Mora and Chris McDaniel, 5-2. to two. John leads to Luna over Brandon Shuff, 5-3. Brandon's closing the gap a little. Uh, Jun Ling Chang over... <laughs> Uh, trailing Danny Olson, five to four. Marcoyo has won his match, as as has Kevin Chang. And Appleton down eight to one to Tyler Steyer. And Ruslan's really broke the ball as well. He had one that he kind of mishit just a touch, uh, but you can see the balls. Now this, this one's going to get kissed back to straight in and about six feet away. Um, normally, Ruslan in a good position like this, eight to five, he normally would roll this ball in and then take another roll shot on the four from some distance. But <laughs> Roll past the nine and shoot the four ball. That's long. right, yeah. Wow, he's, does, he, he strokes the ball that straight? Well, he doesn't mind doing it. Okay. I've seen him okay. take a lot of shots like this in big, big situations. Um, taking a couple look at, looks at this, I think if he went and looked at the other side, to where he would roll into for the four, I think he's going to shoot at it. Uh, now he's looking to see if about elevating on it. But so by looking at where he did at the four ball, I don't think he's considered or had, had considered until going now forward. going forward, right? Well, he was looking at if I stop, can I cut it in the side? Oh, okay. I think that's what he was looking at. Now I think really he's going to look at just cheating this hole here and. And then rolling it in and taking another long one on the four, I believe. I think if he goes and looks to where he can get to, he can get to there, and he's going to just do it again. And of course, the first one is going to end up being, all right, he's calling, called it. In the corner? Yeah, he's going to get a kiss here, isn't he? If, it's, if he's banking, it should. It's going to be close because you can't maneuver much with just top English here. You can't really put heavy spin. Yeah, so, oh, That's he beat close, the kiss, huh? though, but he's not going to beat the sellout. Gonna, yeah, he's not going to care for uh, what he left. Okay, pretty fortunate speed on the three, you could say. Um, it's just an inch up. It's, it's le left an <laughs> offensive shot, but now it lays on the back rail. As I see how he played that, do you think maybe he was considering playing the, the cue ball against the rail using the six ball? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah, if he was just going out all offensive, I think he would have cut it in. I mean, just shot it straight up mm -hmm. in the corner. Pretty nice effort here. Nice. He's going to have to dodge the jump cue, but still a nice effort by Kurt. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to have to keep it in the air quite a ways to get past the nine and then uh, keep it on the table after hitting the three. Yeah. Should be okay. He'll probably one get good thing there. is the ball's in the air, so you get to aim a hair fuller. They cut easier with the jump cue. The ball's in the air, so it hit on top of the three of hair. That's why you see the overcut a lot of times in that situation because a guy will aim naturally, and generally if the ball's in the air, it's catching it on top of it a little bit, okay, so it's going to so cut, it's gonna cut it. Cut yeah, it right, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha. Yep, 
yeah, if you ever practice with it, just set up some that just have a little bit of an angle. You know, nothing mm -hmm. like real straight, but just, you know, 20-degree angle, 25-degree angle, and, and just get one that's a simple jump, one that you're confident in, and aim pretty heavy at it, and you'll be amazed at how easy it cuts the ball, like down the rails, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, I'm surprised he's passing this up. He's going to roll uh, right on top yeah, of the floor. Yeah, but... All the balls on the table, I'm, I'm surprised he, he didn't take that on. He could have drew past the four if he cut it in the lower right. Again, these rules, though, George, I think they really offer to where uh, for a guy to keep shooting, he's got to kick and call which ball he's making and what pocket. So mm -hmm. it makes it a pretty tough proposition. Well, they'd rather go for the sure safe than the possible miss. Well, there's, it just puts a little more value in it. Right. Yeah, but Look see, that's what happens also. That's another reason why you don't see the top players really wanting to play safe in those types of situations. They don't want to allow the other player to come back to the table regardless of the shot. Right. You know, you got to draw the line somewhere, of course. You can't be stupid about going offensive, but I, I think that one was playable for Kurt. I wonder now if he's... He's kind of kicking himself, uh, wondering if I should have shot at that or not. Oh, he's got just enough angle there to, to make himself, put himself in a position to get off the rail for the seven. Yeah, and close enough to it coming mm -hmm. out should not be a problem at all. And that's just the stop, stop you want. Um, Meaning just stop on the seven, pull down off the eight. Mm -hmm. Held it nice. Now he'll just use the rail to come down for the nine. Well, could have got a little more out of that, but it <laughs> should be okay. Come a little closer to the nine ball. A little less angle. Yeah, it's just a hair less missable. It's not yeah, like right. it's a big deal. But. Either way, it closes out the match. And uh, Ruslan Chenehov stays on the one on the winner's side. And Kurt Kobayashi over to the one lost side. Next match coming up will be at 4 o'clock. And uh, it's Jeremy Jones and George Stachas signing out.